So this is the scene I want to apply my effect to. It's a fairly straightforward scene. I've just got an object, the camera's pointing at that object, and uh, some terrains that uh, has the gravel effect on it. And I've got things set up, and you can see it's rendering with depth of field effect, and that's critical for the effect that we're going to apply that we're using depth of field. Now, if I just have a quick look in the render options, you can see that we're using 64 rays per pixel. So there's a slight bit of grain that you can detect in there, but it's not bad. It's the only premium effect that's applied, and the focal length is set to the object. And essentially what I want to do, now I've set this scene up and I'm happy with it, is I want my effect on top of this now. So to achieve this, we'll go through the process and then we'll have a bit of a discussion about what's actually going on. Switch to a side view so that you can see your camera and the objects in your scene. The first thing I need to do is move these around so these objects are in camera space. Now, Bryce has camera space controls, but so far I've not been able to find a way of using them with the precision that I need to, I, to recreate this scene exactly with the effect that I want. So I'm going to do it by moving the things around. So I'll select all my objects, which I can do like that. You'll notice the camera's not selected, and the same is true if I go select all. It doesn't include the camera, and I don't want the camera to be included at this point. With all my objects selected, I go to the attributes and go into the linking tab and set their parent to be the perspective camera. Now, before moving these, because I'm going to move the camera, I want to make sure that I'm familiar uh, and I know my original camera position, which is this. So. I want to see that the, the scene that I finally produce with my effect looks exactly like this, but with the effect. So I've, I've rendered this out and saved it so we can make a comparison at the end of the process. And what I'm going to do is save the camera position in the first memory dot here, and that is a critical step. So I'll go back to my side view. Here we go, uh, keyboard shortcut three. And at this point, select the camera. And because the camera is the parent of all these objects, if I now take the rotation, off the camera so I set X Y and Z if necessary all to zero what that'll do is it'll flatten the camera out and you can see now everything's been pitched up so these are pitched up and they're in the camera space and what I can do now is compress this entire scene so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna move this around so you can see what's going on to, to compress the entire scene with the camera I need to get them all selected and grouped but because these have uh, a linking association now the cameras their parent they're not allowed to exist in a group with the camera until that linking has been removed so what I need to do is again select all so the camera is not selected go to attributes and set the linking back to none now sometimes you have to do that a couple of times for some reason uh, Bryce's uh, linking uh, it seems a little bit unreliable sometimes, uh, possibly because of getting different things selected when you've got a complex scene. So just bear with it. You need to get to a point where you have the group option, and then you need to include the camera. So we just select everything, including the camera, and group it together. And you can see now they all exist in their own box. And that allows us to use these tools on the edit menu here. We can use the 3D transformations. And I'm going to compress the Y axis. So I'm going to set this value to 50. You could get the same effect by scaling the X and the Z axis up to 100%, leaving that at 100%. It's all the same thing. The only important step we must remember is that whatever change that you make here, you also need to make when we set the uh, aspect ratio for rendering, as you'll see in a moment. So the Y axis is compressed by 50%. Everything squishes down relative. So the camera is still pointing at the object where it was before. Now, uh, for the lighting purposes and uh, any other effects that might be applied in the scene, I need to reorientate the scene back to where it was before. So I ungroup these, deselect everything, and then I just select all my objects again, go to the attributes and relink them to the perspective camera, which will mean if I restore my memory dot now, these will get pulled around back into their original position by the camera returning to its original position. So if I just look at the side view now, you can see it looks a bit weird, but that's because the scene's been compressed in the camera space Y. So we won't get any weird distortions other than the distortions that we're aiming for for this effect. 
if I give this a quick render now, you can see that we can see a bit beyond the edges of these, and that's because the scene's been compressed vertically by 50%. So we can compensate for this by going to the document setup and changing the aspect ratio to make sure that the y-axis is, is now 50% of the x, which we can do by placing a 2 in there. So we've now doubled the width, and that will correspondingly restore the scene back to where it was originally, which will also mean we've doubled the amount of sampling. So uh, when, it, when it gets compressed in to restore its original aspect ratio, we will have a better sampled image, so the depth of field effect will be better as well as being anamorphic. Now this is the key. And it took me quite a while, and uh, quite a lot of explaining from Len, for me to grasp this, but what we're doing is in, in the cinema industry, as I understand it, you can, there's plenty of videos on YouTube if you can find them that will explain this, but what you do is you're trying to compress an image, either horizontally or vertically, so it'll fit and use film space up efficiently. So you have a lens that compresses the image and then that goes onto the film and then when you restore the image you have another lens that expands it back out. We're recreating this effect, but the key is everything in front of the lens gets restored so it gets compressed and restored so it looks as it did before, or so it should. We'll come to some of the issues in a minute. But anything that goes on in the lens or behind the lens, between the lens and the film, that doesn't. So that gets distorted by the process which brings it back to its original state. So in the case of Bryce, we're using depth of field. When you use depth of field in Bryce, what happens is the camera moves. It gets dithered around in a circle. Uh, evenly in the X and Y direction in the camera plane. Uh, and this means that you can't use lenses with depth of field effect in Bryce because when it moves around, when it's dithered for the depth of field, it's seen different parts of the lens, which wouldn't normally happen with a camera lens because the camera lens is bolted onto the camera. So you can't fix a lens and use a depth of field effect. So that creates some difficulty in some effects, but uh, that's beside the point, really. Well, the thing is, with depth of field, is that you, you're creating a circle of blur. Uh, I think this is called the bokeh, but I'm not very familiar with these technical terms, so I'm going to avoid using them. You'd have to look that up. But anyway, you've got this circle of blur. And what we want to create this anamorphic distortion is we want that blur to be compressed either horizontally or vertically. So what we've done is by changing the scene's geometry by compressing it vertically, we've got circles of blur now being rendered on a compressed scene, which means when the scene's restored back to its original um, proportions, the, the blur, because it circles in the stretched form, will be stretched vertically in this case. Because we stretch this horizontally, we've got ordinary size circles. We're going to compress it horizontally so that it's back to a square image, which means that these circles of blur will get stretched vertically. Uh, it's a bit tricky to get your head around, but if you follow the process, you'll get the effect. Right, okay. Uh, while this is rendering, and you can see it's getting there, so you can see the effects building up. While this is rendering, we'll have a look at where things can go a bit wrong. Okay, so I had a go with, I'll just draw an image up here, this scene, which is one of Horro's high-resolution terrains, one of the products that we were working on recently, and wanted to apply this effect to this scene. So I went through the same process as you've just uh, seen, and here's an issue. The materials are altitude linked, which means as I compress them, it changes the appearance of the materials. There's also some slope on these materials as well, slope filters, so that also affects. So you don't get the same material effect on the surface, so that breaks a bit. The other thing is the HDRI background, I can't compress that using this method, and the atmosphere. I can't really very easily compress that. I could change the haze height, that's true. And I could probably modify these materials, but I'd have to modify all the materials in the scene to recreate this effect. So what does this look like? And I think I overdid the depth of field effect here when it's been squashed back into its original proportions. Okay, so we've got this stretched blur, but we've also got this very stretched um, background. So I don't think that worked so well, but I thought, what, I, what if we do it the other way? What if instead of squashing this, I st 
stretch it vertically. So uh, I had to go at that and it was slightly more successful. So this is the render edit. I also reduced my depth of field effect by two thirds. So you can see by stretching the landscape vertically, uh, it's a higher contrast because less light is getting in. And some of the materials have changed a bit, but because what I actually did was uh, bring in the X and the Z directions and left the Y the same, it left the relationship between the material and the altitude um, filters the same. So it, it's stretched vertically by squashing the sides in. It doesn't really make any difference uh, because you can still just change the aspect ratio to uh, suit it. So here we go. The mountains have disappeared somewhat behind these other mountains because they're proportionally larger now and we get a lot more blue sky which is nice because it's a nice deep blue sky which you can't normally see. And when this image was restored to its original proportions I think it was much more successful. So in this case, I've got quite subtle, a uh, horizontally stretched uh, depth of field effect. Now, I wouldn't normally use depth of field effect with a landscape anyway, because it tends to be something that you get with still lifes, um, as you can see, which is what we've got rendering in the background. So this was slightly um, more successful. In fact, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the effect in this, because it's, uh, it's done some nice things with the the water down here. If I can get the original image up so you can just do a quick comparison. You can see that um it looks a little bit it looks a little bit more um contrasty. Uh, probably it helps with the blue sky here. So anyway it's an effect and uh, so it's a matter of uh, personal taste whether you like it. I, I'm pleased with the results there. So uh to get back to this you can see that it's nearly finished rendering out and what I'm going to do is launch PaintShop Pro and um, if I look at the dimensions of my original image, which I can get off uh, Windows, this was 600 by 600. So whatever, whatever I've done to distort it, I need to restore that. So I'll just go uh, save as, uh, which will increment the name by one. Okay, we'll just take a moment to save. When that uh, has been saved, the terrain's quite large for the, the gravel effect. Okay, I just use, um, image resize and I'll resize it back to its original dimensions so I've had to oops, unlock the aspect ratio here that was automatically locked and there we go there's our effect so that's our new effect and here's our old image in fact if I just load it into PaintShop Pro we can see a side by side comparison so the effect is subtle and it shouldn't really change any of the geometry in the scene. So what I could do is I could show you the difference by subtracting these two. I've not tried this yet. This is a bit of an experiment. So I'll control C and control L to give that a new layer. And then if I do a difference, right, we can see what the difference between the two is. So there's some difference in the shadows, uh, which you might expect, because the thing is that the, the entire lighting environment of the scene, I couldn't compress that. So I've compressed the objects in the scene, so they've changed their relationship to the lighting. But otherwise, you can see that the, the object itself is, is uh, where it uh, should be and that the, s the stones are where they should be. The, the lighting's changed a bit, but the most noticeable difference of all is this, uh, the background with this anamorphic um, depth of field blur. So there you go. That is, in a nutshell, how to go about producing this effect. As you can see, it's not too time consuming. If you want to go back to another camera position, uh, you have to go back to your original scene because once you move the camera out of this position that you've got it in now, so if, if, if we haven't got things linked with the camera, so if we'd go and unlink them to the camera, you can't just move your camera as you would in any other, any other scene to get a different perspective on this because at that point you will see um, the distortion. So you can see this is this is a trapezoidal shape. Is that a trapezoidal? Um, or is it a parallelogram? I think it might be a parallelogram. Anyway, it, it's clearly distorted geometry and it's only from the original camera position that it uh, that it's gonna that it's gonna work. So there you go. That is the effect. I hope you found that interesting that you'll have a go at experimenting with this in Bryce. Cheers now.